The big question around Nebraska recruiting recently has been, can Matt Rule get a top 20 class to Lincoln or will he fall short? So in today's video, I'm going to go over a full recruiting update. We're going to go over every single commit for the Huskers, players I feel very confident will commit in the near future, and then I'm going to make my prediction. Will Nebraska get a top 20 class or will they be on the outside looking in? So really quick, we have a full recruiting update for you today. Make sure to smash that like button if you're getting fired up. And while you're at it, please subscribe to the channel. We have a family of over 4,000 diehard Husker fans, and I'm posting a video about Nebraska football and Nebraska recruiting every single day. So if you're a fan of this program and you enjoy daily content, talking about your favorite team, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. It would help me out greatly. But without further ado, let's get into it. Talking about Nebraska recruiting specifically, where this team is going to end up on the recruiting rankings when it's all said and done. So as of right now, if you look at 24-7's recruiting rankings, we are sitting at number 38 in the country, sitting there with 15 commits, three four-stars, and of course, 12 three-stars. Now, obviously not where you want to be if you're a Nebraska fan. Nebraska recently has had a lot of recruiting success getting in that top 20 range, even top 25 very consistently. So for that reason, you'd like to think the Huskers are going to get back up there again. So in today's video, we're going to use 24-7's class calculator tool. Now what this is going to do is it's going to project where Nebraska ends their recruiting ranking at. So as of right now, you can see our team score is 192.66. And if we go back here, you can see that um, right here by my cursor. Now, in order for Nebraska to get about a top 20, maybe even a, even a top 25 class, you need that to be around 240 when it's all said and done in December and January. So let's go ahead and add some of this rec the, the recruits to this class that I feel confident will commit to Nebraska. So again, all of the guys who are already committed, TJ Latif, Malcolm Simpson, Jamar and Parker, they're all down here. They're all added to this. But let's go ahead and add Bryson Weber to this class. So I've talked about him extensively in the past. I'm recording this on Friday night. I expect him to commit any day now. Of course, four-star cornerback out of Texas. And as you can see, he bumps up our team score already to 200. So if you go here, as of right now, if we were to get him tomorrow, we would bump up to about 25, 26 in America. So already a really good jump with Bryce Weber. Let's go ahead and add some more players. So Will Hawthorne, another guy that I feel comfortable that Nebraska will land in a couple days. Again, a guy who's a three-star linebacker coming out of Iowa. So that bumps us up about three spots there. And let's go ahead and add one or two more players. This is Christian Jones. So I talked about Christian Jones in my recent video. And he is waiting until the fall to commit, it looks like. It looks like he's going to wait till October, even November, to commit to a school. Now, that is a good thing for Nebraska. That means that they can show him more winning football. And again, if you can win seven, eight, nine games, he will absolutely stay home. And I feel com confident that Christian Jones will be a Husker. So again, you're sitting here at about 212 with 18 commits. Of course, we know that Matt Rule is looking at a, a little bit of a smaller class. Nebraska already has a very big roster. So we're going to add one more guy here who I feel comfortable uh, who will commit. And this was going to be Noah King. So again, adds us about three points there. So right now we're sitting at about 215. Now, if we got all of these commits today or tomorrow, we would be sitting at about 18, 17 in the country. So that's very good. Now, we're not going to land these guys tomorrow. At the end of the day, all of those teams that are listed right here, TC, Washington, Michigan, they're going to continue to add commits. They're going to continue to improve their ranking. Now, if you go over here to the class of 2024, Nebraska had the 18th best class in America. We were sitting at a total of 247. Again, Missouri here with 240. They're sitting at 20. So, again, in order for Nebraska to get a top 20 class, you're going to be around 240 again. So, we're about 25 points short. Now let's start to add some guys who are on the borderline, guys who are really going to need a fight to get. Let's go ahead and get Cade Petrzak into this recruiting class, of course, the number one player in the state of um, North Dakota, a guy who I recently did a film breakdown of. And again, that adds us a couple more points there. And then let's add Aiden Manatai. Now this is if everything goes right, you can get Aiden Manatai, one of the better players in Hawaii to this class. So those are, those are about six players I just added. We're sitting at 21 commits. Two of which you don't really feel that confident you're going to land, but I'm comfortable with adding the other four. Now, let's go ahead and use our imagination. 21 commits is enough for Nebraska. Right now, you're, you are not sitting at a top 20 class. This is maybe even top 30. 
let's say Nebraska wins seven, eight, nine games this year, like we're expecting them to do. You're going to flip a couple guys, some potentially very, very high up guys that you were trying to get in the past. So let's add a guy who we wanted to land the first time around who just committed to another school. This is SJ Alafetuli. So let's say that Nebraska, let's put on our imagination caps. Nebraska wins eight, nine games. Miami does not do well. He flips from Miami to Nebraska. Boom. There you go. You just added a high four-star center to this class. And you're sitting at 230. Now, that is a very realistic scenario. I'm not betting on it hap uh, happening. But if Nebraska can have a legit season, you are in play to flip some of these guys. All right, let's put on our imagination cap one more time here. Dawson Merritt. Let's say you do just enough. I'm not predicting he's going to flip by any means. But let's say you can have that year that you're expecting, eight, nine wins. Maybe Alabama struggles a little bit. They only get 10. He wants to stay closer to home. You get him in this class, you're sitting there right about 240. There you go. Now, am I predicting either of those guys to commit to Nebraska? No. So we're going to take all of these guys off. But it is a possibility. And that's what I want to tell Nebraska fans. So without, without both of those guys, you're sitting at about 220. Okay. And if we're looking at last year's recruiting ranking, that's going to sit you at about maybe 30th best in America. Okay. That's not terrible. However... You want to get that to a top 20 range. So that's why I try to tell Nebraska fans is that, okay, listen, we're not going to have a top 20 class going into the season, but if you can do what you're expecting them to do, if you can win football games, you can win seven, eight, nine games, go to a bowl game, even be in contention for the college football playoff. You don't even have to make it. Just be in contention. Yes, this recruiting class is going to be very good um, for the Huskers. Now, there's also going to be people on my comment section who say, Wilson, recruiting rankings don't matter. It doesn't matter where we end up. Now, you're partially right. Because development is more important than recruiting. However, if you look at the college football playoff every single year, they all have one thing alike. They're recruiting at an elite level. Okay, Michigan was recruiting at an elite level under Jim Harbaugh. Alabama is always recruiting at an elite level. That's what those teams always do. They get five stars. They get four stars. And under the rare occurrence that a team like a Washington or TCU can sneak there in the national title game or even in the playoff, they get blown out. So... In order for Nebraska to win national championships, even in order for Nebraska to win the Big Ten, you've got to get legit um, recruiting classes. You've got to get these top 20 classes consistently, even top 15. So this is what I predict for Nebraska, about 221 at least going into the fall or at least you know going into December. But Nebraska is absolutely going to be in play to get some of these flips. And I'm going to tell you this. Matt Rule always flips guys in December who we have no idea you know, about like Keona Wilhite, for example, Keona Wilhite was a four-star defensive end coming out of Arizona. We had no idea, you know, about his name even going into December. Then of course he decommitted from Washington, Nebraska flips him. And there you go. So Matt rule constantly in communication with guys that we don't even know about. So for that reason, we're going to imagine the Cornhuskers end about 225, even 230. And if we're basing that off last year's recruiting rankings, Nebraska would be sitting about the 25th best class in America. Now, you're absolutely going to take that. It's a smaller class for the Huskers, um, but hopefully 2026 is going to be that class that Nebraska could look back on and say, yeah, that changed everything because we got you know this four-star to come on campus and we got him to come in. We got this five-star. It's all about winning, folks, but don't freak out about Nebraska's recruiting class. If we can get the guys that I put on here, we're going to be just fine. So let me know down below. Do you think Nebraska would get a top 20 class, top 25, even top 30? And hey, if you made this far in the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And as always, folks, go Big Red, go Matt Rule, and see you in the next one.